In this episode, we're setting up a holiday RGB light display in 10 minutes flat. What? <laughs> All right, so who doesn't love a good holiday light display? Now, if you didn't know the process, we're gonna run through that real quick today, but the first thing we gotta do is pull a bunch of electronics and lights out of the garage. So let's get busy, we don't have much time to waste. All right, so we've got all our parts laid out on the grass. We've got eight, six, four, and two foot lengths. These are all modular components, basically uh, LED tube protectors. We've got a thin strip of coroplast in there. All of the nodes are three inches on center, drilled through that. And then we've got some end caps that are just used for real estate mailers. Um, so these are all laid out, organized. These are the different segment lengths that we need to outline the house. We're gonna put up the ladder and start hanging these things. And it's important to note that on each channel of RGB, we can only get four eight foot lengths. So whether you use four eight foot, a six, and a four or a two, whatever combination, it needs to add up to 128 pixels. So each of these eight foot lengths have 32 pixels in it, and subsequent sizes have a corresponding proportional number of pixels. All right, so let's get started. All right, for this segment, this is for the arch. It's longer than eight feet. In this case, it happens to be 12 feet. So we're gonna use an eight foot length and a four foot length. Now to keep them semi straight, we have zip ties that we'll be screwing to the facing of the gutter, but we're also gonna tape these together to just provide a joint between the two segments. Just a couple rounds of this clear packing tape will be fine, and then we'll get it hung. <laughs> All right, so we've got all the lawn elements laid out and we've got everything making our home run back to this distribution center. So the next step is to wire up all of the strings to the distribution center so that when the protocol comes into this to distribute the light commands, it can go out to the appropriate string. So we'll go over that quick, but first let's run through wiring up these guys. All of these RGB strings have three wires. They have a positive, negative, and a data wire. They need to be hooked up in the right order on this distribution board or else you'll just have trouble. All right, so we've got all the wires that make a home run back to this Falcon 16 power and data distribution board. From there, we just wire up the correct strings to the correct connectors, and then we're good to go. In order to get data to this, it all comes over this orange Cat5 cable that you see here, and that goes into the garage where it connects to the Raspberry Pi Falcon Pi player. Falcon Pi player is responsible for scheduling, coordinating, and sending the commands to this board. Once the commands come here, then this is just a matter of distributing the power and the commands to the right pixels and everything Thing works. Alright, so now that we have the lights hung up on the house, we'll need to go into Lightshow Pro and then configure a virtual representation for them. We know that we've got 10 strings out in the yard, each consisting of 128 pixels. So let's open up Lightshow Pro and then show you how those are done. Alright, now that we're in Lightshow Pro, we need to set up the virtual representation of the strings we mounted on the house. On the left hand side, you can see multiple controllers have been added to this sequence. Strings 1 through 5 represent the 5 128 pixel strings that outline the house. If we look at those, there's 128 tracks in each of those controllers. Each of those tracks represent three channels, and that's being the red, green, and blue element of that bulb on that particular string. Now, in order for us to draw them, it's as easy as right-clicking on the controller and draw controller channel images. This is string one, and we know that the first segment of string one is right down here. There's an eight foot segment that goes vertically. When we draw that, we would split the item across multiple channels, and then we would select channel one through 32. When that's done, we click OK, and that segment of the string has been split into 32 pixels. Now that Lightshow Pro is aware of where those 32 pixels are, we need to continue through the rest of the display to virtually represent where each of those nodes exist. The reason for doing that is then we can apply broad color washes and patterns to the display with ease. That's where Lightshow Pro really shines, is being able to generate effects for pixels in broad matrices and animations, and it makes that sequencing process fun. So I've already drawn the images 
these for the remaining controllers. We've got five strings outlining the house, three strings for mini trees on the yard, one for the bush on the side of the garage, and one for the ivy. That makes a total of 10 128 pixel strings, each with three channels each, making a grand total of 3,840 channels across all of those smart strings. In addition to those strings, I've set aside 12 discrete DMX channels that I can send to my DMX floodlights to complement the RGB pixels that we have on the house. So once we've got all of these channels virtually represented, it's easy to generate effects from a layer by simply dragging across a particular section. We can generate a macro effect, in which case we'll demonstrate the slider effect here. We'll select a color pattern, we'll tell it to move upward, and we're going to apply that to all of the RGB channels. Click OK, it'll generate those animations. Now it's mapping it to where the, each RGB pixel is on the display, and once it does that, it will generate the effects for each of the channels on each of the controllers and perform this broad color rainbow movement effect. Now you can see Lightshow Pro beginning to generate the actual effect for the given channels and controllers. When it's complete, I can expand one and you can see the various commands that were generated by that process. In order to see what it really looks like, we'll bring up the display preview, enlarge it a little and scrub across that section. So that's it. You can see that all of the channels are mapped correctly and we can apply broad color wash effects to the display really easily. We can also get in there and do really tedious stuff and we can dissect it down to however we want. We could work directly with the mini trees or we can work directly with just the floodlights, just the house outlines and any combination that we choose. Um, so then it's a process of just going through the song and sequencing it how you like it to be sequenced. And so let's run through that process and create a quick performance for this show. Bigger than you expected? <laughs> So once we have the sequence where we're happy with it, we can just export it from Lightshow Pro into a conductor format. Conductor format is the native protocol, but in order to run that on a Falcon Pi player, we'll need to convert it into an F sequence. In order to do that, we can use X lights. X lights can load the conductor sequence and convert it into the F sequence format. Once we have that, we can just upload it to our Falcon Pi player and we should be good to go. We'll also have to configure the Falcon Pi player to map the network channels to the correct outputs. Let's look at that process real quick. So so in order to configure the Falcon Pi player, we just point a browser to the IP address of the player itself and the web interface brings up the configuration screen. There are lots of things you can do here. There's lots of plugins, network configurations, effects and display testing that you can handle. But the most important part is really just about setting up your channel output. Now in the particular configuration that we're running on this display, we know that we had uh, 10 strings, 128 pixels per each. So we ended up with like 3,840 pixels. So to use one pixel net universe, it'll account for 4,096 channels. So in order to do that, all we really need to do is enable that network configuration as pixel net protocol starting at the first channel. It'll automatically allocate up to 4,096. If we had additional pixel net universes, then we could enable those as well. But for this display, we're only using one universe. But after the 4,096th channel, we are using 12 DMX channels for DMX RGB floodlights. So we'll need to enable the DMX protocol starting at channel 4097. So that's all we'll need to do on the Falcon Pi player. That will route all of the correct channels to the correct output networks and everything just works magically. Once we're done with that, we go into content setup, we configure playlists, we upload our files, associate the sequence files with the audio files, we give it a name, and then we can go ahead and schedule that playlist. If we go into the scheduler, it's a very simple scheduling capabilities, allows you to put the date range and the time frame in which it should play and repeat, and then we're good to go. It's just a matter of going outside and checking it out. Pretty straightforward, not too challenging, but there are a few technical details that you'll learn along the way about how to organize and design your network that best suits your environment. And aside from that, you know, I hope you have a, a wonderful holiday season, spend time with your family, and to the Maker Nation, I'd love to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, be safe, have fun, I can't wait to see you next time. Yeah.